Okay, so as you can see, the car is behind me here. What we're gonna do today, um, I was just gonna boost leak test the car because I've had the charge pipe pop off a few times. So I'm fairly confident that uh, there's gonna be a boost leak most likely here uh, and on the uh, actual compressor side there, probably for sure. And these cars, I mean, most boosted cars, but Mazda Speeds uh, specifically, they really, really don't like boost leaks. Um, causes all kinds of weird problems. So I was just gonna do a quick boost leak test. Uh, and I thought, you know, maybe I could take you guys along and just show you. Um, I have my own homemade boost leak tester here that uh, I can go over the parts list. I can put it in the description and uh, I'll put it up on the screen. But this cost about $30 to make. Um, this is a three inch to three and a half inch coupler. Just a cheapie off Amazon. It was like maybe 15 bucks. Uh, even the gauge, it's just a uh, kind of standard boost gauge, not even just a you know nothing special this was maybe also 10 bucks off amazon it, it seems to read accurate and then a schrader valve you can either use a schrader valve or you can use um uh the compressor fitting that actually goes direct to the the compressor line that's what i should have used i should have bought one of those but i didn't think anything of it and i went with the schrader valve it still works it's just more annoying because you've got to hold the actual uh piece onto this while you're you know filling it with boost and uh <laughs> it can be a bit of a pain sometimes but yeah uh this coupler came even with the hose clamp up so i didn't even need to buy those and that's it you drill your holes you fire them through tons of jb weld underneath to seal it all up and that's it this thing works so uh i've used it before it does work it's it's a little janky but for 30 bucks it's <laughs> it's good enough uh so i'm gonna actually go from my intake Typically, you want to boost leak test at the compressor, um, the compressor inlet on the actual turbo. It's a four inch inlet on this thing, which I don't have the coupler for. Yes, there is one in there, but uh, I don't really want to go uh, digging around and taking the, the battery out right now and, and, you know, going over all that. So uh, I'm going to leave that all on and uh, I'm just going to go from the inlet. Now, the only problem with that is if there's any leaks between the inlet and the compressor housing, it's, it's annoying. That's a very annoying place to have a leak and not something that you want to be troubleshooting or trying to find or play with so hopefully no leaks there but uh we're gonna see i'm fairly confident that uh the hot side pipe is gonna be leaky leak so uh anyways i'm gonna set this up and uh we'll take a look and let's see okay so uh here we are we're set up now um i'm hoping you guys can see this okay i'm just gonna check here uh one more time to see uh what you guys see what it seems like we got a decent angle here uh, i'm going hands-free mode only because i don't have anyone else to film and this is kind of a <laughs> two-hand job here so make sure you tighten your hose clamps down real nice and good uh, i slipped this on and before i tighten this i thought you know what let's see what happens if we put maybe one psi in there and uh, just as the gauge barely creeped this thing shot off so <laughs> this will come flying out at you if it's uh not tightened on in there and even if it is tightened on in there you really don't want to you know boost leak test up to like 30 psi you really just want to get enough in there to confirm if it's leaking or not 10 15 if you're running 30 pounds of boost then maybe you want to go that high but i don't think it's absolutely necessary to to, to the boost leak test that high but here we go let's uh let's see how she does well our map sensor o-ring is leaking like crazy and that's uh Big time no good on these cars. So I'm gonna take this guy out and see if we have uh, an O-ring for it. I might have one around the shop. If not, I'm gonna have to get one because that is no bueno big time. This leak is gonna cause nightmares for when the car runs. And it's actually kind of common on these. Uh, the O-ring in here just goes out. It's, it happens. So uh, I'm gonna pull out the map sensor and take a look and show you guys what I find. I'm just gonna focus on this, but the O-ring looks okay. There is a little spot there, uh, but it's just dirt. So I'm just gonna go around and clean it up uh, and re reseat it in there and see if that seals it back up. If not, we need a map sensor O-ring, which uh, not a big deal. We'll have to get one of those, but any weirdness that the car does, <laughs> we'll know why. Uh, but yeah, that's basically, basically it. Uh, pretty simple, two Allen head bolts. <laughs> Those come out this thing's in there pretty good because it is uh it is kind of like a, a friction fit almost it, it sits in there pretty pretty hard so you just give it a a pull it comes right out and that's it i really should run some some math cleaner on this thing because like it's dirty i cleaned it years ago um that's the back side of it that's why it's so much cleaner it sits in here like this so your air comes in through your intake and it hits this side of the uh 
the sensor. That's the sensor there. Not sure if you guys know how these work, but it's actually a heated element. Uh, it gets hot, this little guy there. Uh, it gets hot, and then as uh, your car's pulling in air, it cools that little element off, and that tells the car how much uh, air you're flowing. So it's a kind of a, a simple piece, but very important, uh, very sensitive, OEM or bust, basically. So, uh, yeah, um, that's it. Okay, so boost leak's completed. Um, there was one kind of... I guess oversight that I kind of forgot about and it startled me for a second. So I'm going to show you guys the mistake I made. Don't make the same mistake. Um, I have been boost leak testing from the intake, which doesn't see boost. Okay, It only sees vacuum. The O-ring, once I reseated it, plugged it back in, it sealed to about 15 PSI, then it started leaking. This doesn't see boost, it only sees vacuum, so that's kind of an unrealistic expectation that this is going to seal perfectly. I am going to replace the O-ring anyways, it's a cheap thing to do. Uh, and again, very important that this is not seeing vacuum leaks, because that will break things. Um, but anyways, I left the valve cover connected, uh, the PCV um, vent, whatever there. Um, a lot of people have that deleted, I don't yet, I don't know why I just put a little filter there, but I had that plugged in. And as I was boost leak testing it, I was getting a leak from the VVT solenoid and that is not supposed to see boost. So unless something is seriously, seriously broken, in which case the car probably wouldn't even be running, that should not be leaking. Maybe oil, uh, if the seal goes bad, that's fine, but it should not be leaking boost uh, or seeing boost. And I'm hoping I didn't pop the seal. Uh, it is cheap, so I'm going to replace that too, because why not? Um, but yeah, so I just wanted to show you guys how it worked. Uh, and how the little tester here works, my little creation. So I did build this myself, like I said, and I will include um, all the parts, parts list. If you're in Canada, it's a nice, good, cheap DIY boost leak tester. Uh, I know in the States, you guys can buy these things pre-made for like the same price, but we can't here. So anyways, uh, I guess I'll just show you that it works. So we're at almost 10. Still sweeping up. We're just about at 15. Just over 15 is where uh, the map sensor starts leaking, but look at the freaking swelling here. <laughs> this coupler is seeing some, some boost, but we're just about to touch 20 and nothing's pissing, just a uh, little bit from the map sensor. So I'm gonna call this boost leak test uh, successful. So I'm just going to close off here why uh, boost leak testing your car is important. Uh, so turbo cars, um, especially anything more modern, newer, I'm going to say like 2008 and up, especially German vehicles or something like the Mazda Speed, uh, anything that runs on a MAF sensor that relies on that for everything, uh, it's going to be real sensitive uh, to boost leaks and vacuum leaks, both cold starts, idle, uh, whatever. It's just, it's not going to like it. Um, the ECU relies heavily on the MAF sensor uh, to determine what it's going to do, you know, uh, with everything else. So... Uh, it's very important to make sure that you don't have any boost leaks now. Uh, how often do you need to test this stuff? Not often. Uh, I had uh, the hot side pipe pop off on me a few times uh, last two weeks ago. Uh, and when you put it back on, it's it, it's tough to get it perfect when you're on the side of the street and you're just trying to survive <laughs> and make it home and make sure that, you know, you got your clamps tight enough and everything. So I just wanted to make sure that I had that charge pipe in there properly. When you're beating on a car, especially high upper, uh, high RPM, high boost, uh, boost leaks can, can cause misses. They can cause, you know, just the poor feeling in the power band, you know, uh, boost lag. Uh, you know, delayed spool response, all kinds of weird little issues, little gremlins pop up. So boost leaks and vacuum leaks, definitely something that you want to check for at least once a season. Uh, if, you know, for me, this is going to be a, a, a spring prep every year now that I built the boost leak tester. Um, and anytime you blow off a charge pipe and you put it back, it's a good idea to do a little boost leak test just to make sure A, is that charge pipe going to pop again right away? Um, or B, is the, uh, you know, is it fixed? Is there no leaks? Is everything good? Uh, or is anything else leaking? Is anything else going to pop off? So, uh, definitely a good little, uh, habit to get into every once in a while to boost leak test your car you don't need anything crazy you don't need a massive compressor i have a friend who's got a little i think a one or a five gallon whatever small compressor uh, and his works just fine he's got a boost leak tester also homemade uh, and it works no problem he's able to test his car without issues so yeah you really don't need anything crazy you don't need a big compressor uh you know smaller ones just gonna run longer and be louder but again not uh not a big deal so uh yeah that's it for the boost leak test video